Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Preparing Your Course for the Transition to Blackboard Learn Ultra Course View, also known as UCV. My name is Aisha Haynes. I'm the Assistant Director at the Center for Teaching Excellence. I'm also an instructional de designer. I am joined by uh, Chris Brown, a Senior Instructional Technology Consultant with eLearning Services in the Division of Information Technology. All right, before we get started, um, we want to know where are you in your transition to Blackboard Learn Ultra Course View? Where are you in your transition to UCV? You can include this information in the, in the chat. All right, have not started yet. Just been browsing in the sandbox, have not started. Okay, well, this is a good place to, to be to get started. And the course in uh, the summer, the courses in summer are an, an original course view. So if you are teaching in the, the summer, your courses are currently available in Blackboard and they are in the original course view. Um, if you would like to convert your course to ultra course view for the summer, just let us know and we will share some information with you on how to do so. Head off the press today. Fall courses are now currently available in Blackboard, and they are in the Ultra Course view. So as of today, your fall 2024 courses are available, and they are in the Ultra Course view. We're going to talk about a few options when you think about and consider preparing your course for UCV. The first option is to copy individual items from your original course to an ultra course view sandbox course. A sandbox course is a test course that does not contain students. You can copy your sandbox course to your live course in the future. This is re recommended if you will be teaching this summer or if you want to build a, a test course that you could use for the fall so that you can have a repository for future semesters. Option two is similar to option one, but since your fall 2024 courses are now available in Blackboard, you can also copy individual items from your original course to your fall course. So if you, you can go ahead and start working in your fall course by copying individual items from your previous course that you taught in original view. The third option is to copy your entire course from your original course to your fall course. Um, the first two options are the ones that we, re re that we re recommend, um, but there is an option to copy your entire course from your previous course. And I'll talk a little bit about that later in this pre presentation. So before I go into details about the, the steps, the options that I shared earlier, there are some things to consider as you prepare your course for the transition to UCV. Number one, you can only go two folders level deep in UCV. Um, so if you decide to copy your original course, into your sandbox course or your fall course, you will want to restructure your course in original so that it does not go more than two level folders deep. So if you don't restructure, the, floater, the folders will still be in ultra, but they will be displayed under each other and they won't be within each other, within the, the folder. The folders will be under each other. In addition, there are items that will not copy from original to ultra. Some common items that won't copy are blogs. If you use the module page, there are certain question types that won't convert or copy over, like file response, jumbled sentence, opinion liker, ordering, and quiz bowl. The survey tool does not copy or convert over. And if you utilize the built-in syllabus tool 
in Blackboard original, that will not convert over, copy over as well. I'll put a link in the chat so that you can have access to this list of what copies and what doesn't. So what questions do we have so far? Mostly what we've had so far is people not being able to find their courses, but most everybody's found them. That I can I was see. unable to find mine as well at first, but then when I went on, under current courses and clicked fall 2024, I was able to see my fall course there. So I'm glad to see that everyone can now see their fall courses. So that means that you can start getting to work. So I will now go into options one and two. I'm going to kind of combine those to show you how to copy individual items to your ultra course from an original. Let's say you have submitted a request for a sandbox course and you have that sandbox course available. Your sandbox course will be blank. As I talked about earlier, your fall course will have a mandatory attendance tracker for student financial aid, which is new to the university. We also now have access to Zoom, and that is available in your fall course as well. When you start thinking about converting your course or preparing to convert your course, you want to consider creating a structure for your course first, and then copy the items from your original course to your old ultra course. So think about reimagining how you want your course to look in this new environment. So let's just say that you want to add a learning module. A learning module lets students navigate, navigate from one content item to the next without distractions or extra clicks, and they can use forward and back arrows. With this feature, you can also force sequence so this forces students to view items in an order. You can also add pictures to learning modules and you can use the artificial intelligence assist feature in Ultra to auto-generate learning modules. And that is here, auto-generate learning modules. So if you wanna go ahead and add a learning module to your course, you click add content and then click create. And this is if you're in a sandbox. If you're in your fall course, you will see a circle with the plus sign. You will simply click that and then click create from there. So your, your sandbox will be blank. So you can add content right here in the middle. In your fall course, you will click the plus sign with the, um, with the circle. That means you can add items. We're gonna work here in the sandbox course. So once again, I click add content, then create and then I will click learning module. You can give your learning module a name. You can make it available to students or not. You can add a description. As I mentioned earlier, you can force sequence. You can also add Im images. If you click add image, you can upload an image from your device, from your computer. You can also upload an image from Unsplash. So we have access to stock images from Unsplash. You can also auto-generate Im images using artificial intelligence. So I'm gonna do stock images from Unsplash. You can search for a keyword related to your course. You can select the image that you want to use, click next. You can zoom in and out for the image. You can move the image around to get it how you want it. You can then click save, and then you'll click save again once it's there. So once again, what we're doing is we're structuring our course to fit this new learning environment. What you can then, then do is copy individual items over from your original course to your ultra course. What I'll do is click the module, click the plus sign with the circle, click copy content. 
I will search for my course. I will select the name of my course. And then I can drill down to find out, to figure out what I want to copy over from this particular course for this particular module or week. I will then click start copy. Depending on how many, how much information that you're copying, depend uh, that has an impact on the amount of time it takes. So this should take about 20 to 30 sec seconds. And I see Chris has been answering questions about sandbox. Um, yes, you can use the sandbox if you want. If not, you can work in, in your course. Um, please tell me if this question is out of place or if it would come at a later time, but I keep a series of um, labs and quizzes in my content collection that I deploy as they are needed um, throughout the semester. So I guess two part question, if this is when we would address this is, um, is there a way to save all of them? And then how would I deploy them? You know, I used to create a separate tab on the left. I would call it labs and quizzes, those two things. So that's part of my primary concern with, with, with everything that's going on. Um, yes, uh, to copy from the content collection, um, I should, you would go down there and click on um, uh, books and tools. Pretend like you're going to add something there and um, okay. down there. Okay. Yeah. So once you, so you can add in information in your course by clicking the circle with the plus sign, and then you can access your content collection from there. Okay. So the old content collection until I have time to do that, it's not going to magically just disappear. <laughs> no, no. All your, yeah. So all your original courses will still be there and all your past content will still be, still be, be will still be there as well. So nothing will go away. Okay. That's 99% of what I needed to hear and feel comfortable with. So thank you so much. I will continue to listen. <laughs> You're welcome. And Stephen, we can um, uh, definitely send out the recording of this of this session as, as well. And Tracy, um, her course is not available, but we'll we will look into that. Um, but your sandbox course is so, so, so that's good. But we'll look, look into your um, fall course a little bit later. So what, once again. Uh, what I did was I went here and created a, a learning module, named it. So I'll just create one more so you can see that again. I added an, I added an image from Unsplash. You can select the image that you like and click Next. Click Save and Save again. You can then access, click the module, click the plus sign with the circle, click copy content, search for your course. And I guess I can show you here, if you want to copy your entire course, you'll just click this box here and then click start copy. You just click this box if you want to copy your entire course, but I'll go to that later. But to copy individual items, you will click the name of the course and then drill down to what you would like to copy over. And then you would click start copy. And once again, that'll take about um, about 10 to 15 seconds for the amount of items that I copied over here. And when you copy things over, you will um, see some exceptions. Um, so you want to kind of view those as well to see maybe what has happened with the conversion. Usually it's small things like loss of formatting, et cetera. Um, so you can kind of see that as, as well. You can also get to that exceptions report by clicking these three dots here and course tax, tasks and logs. You can see exceptions reports there as well. So let's say you want to copy something not within a module, but just copy it right here in the course content section. You will just click the circle with the plus sign and click copy content. You will search your for your course that you want to copy from. Click the name of it. Unless I'm going to um, copy over this entire syllabus and schedule folder, I'll click that and then click Start Copy, and that will appear here in our course content section as well. In about 10 seconds, is what I would say. Okay. So now we have that here, and by default things are hidden from students, but you can simply click 
the arrow here and say visible to students. All right, so that's options one, one and two in terms of copying individual items from your original course to your sandbox course, but first creating a structure for your, for your uh, course. I will now go into detail about how to copy your entire course from Ultra to Original. If you have a lot of information in Blackboard, if you teach online, or if you use more than two levels of folders, then this may not be the best option for you. So here is an, here is an original course that I had. I've been teaching at Ultra for about four years now, but this is a, an original course that I had designed when I was teaching in, a, in, in, a, in original. Uh, what I will show you now is how to copy your original course to your sandbox course or to your fall course. You will click these three dots on the right. You will click copy item. You will search for your course. You will click the text box next to your course, and then you will click start copy. This will take a while because this course has a lot of information in it, but I've already converted it and this is how it looks. As you will see, all of the content areas from the left turned into folders. One thing to remember is that you can only go two folder levels deep in Ultra. So this is one level of folder. You can only put one more folder, one more level of folder within this folder. So that's one thing to, to keep in mind. So if you have a course that has quite a bit of folders, it will flatten out and you will see the folders under each other. They will not be within each other. It can only go two folders level deep. So this is how your course will look when you copy it over. All the content items will appear here in the middle and they will be folders. Um, once you're in Ultra, you can move things around. If you wanna take something out of a module, take something um, from one place in Blackboard and move it to somewhere else, you can simply drag and drop if it's not in the structure that you like. All of the items across the top cannot be modified. They're going to be the same across all courses in Blackboard. All items on the left under details and actions, those things cannot be modified as well. So all items across the top cannot be modified. All items on the left cannot be modified. But you have access to modify information in this course content section. You can also add additional information to your course by creating, by clicking the circle and then create. You can create learning modules, folders, documents, links, tests, assignments, forms, discussions, and journals. So whenever you see this plus sign with the, with the circle, that's where you can create information. You can upload information. If you want to use the content collection to upload information, you can do that as well. There is also a student preview. You can view this, your course, how a student will see it by clicking the student preview button. And then that will appear here. You can exit out of student preview mode as well. All right. Oh, so if you, another feature I want to show while I'm here, let's just say you copy your entire course and you say, you know what, this is a mess. I want to go ahead and start from scratch. I want to delete everything out and start from scratch and just kind of rethink how I'm going to design my course in this new environment. You can do a batch edit. If you click the three dots on the right, you can click batch edit. You can select all items by clicking this box here, and then you can say delete items. You can also edit the visibility of all of your items here in batch as well. 
and you can also edit dates. So once again, if your course is a mess, or if you wanna change your dates all at once or change the visibility of all your information at once, you can do that in batch, ed batch edit. You'll click the three dots here on the right, click batch, ed batch edit, you can select all items or you can select the items that you don't want or that you want to change. I'm going to do edit visibility so I can make all these visible to students. Let's say I want to um, change the date on these two items. I can click edit dates and change the dates here. If I want to delete these items, I can select that, those items and then click delete items. And then that content will update and those particular items will be removed. So that might be a handy feature for you to utilize that batch edit, fee, batch edit fee feature. It's kind of still working and I'll let it keep working. All right, let me go to see if there are questions. Um, let's see, I know Chris looks like she's been answering some questions. Um, Yes. So if you have more than folders, you can modify them. Yes. And the great book. Yes. Okay. I will now show you a, a fully designed course in Ultra. This is a course that I taught in spring one. I'm going to show you a second course. And if you want access to that course, you can let me know. I can grant you access to it. It's a mock course that I created that's built in Ultra. Um, so the first one, as I mentioned, is one that I that I taught in the taught in the in, in spring one. So you can add a banner to, to your course. Um, you can um, click the, the arrow here, the, the, the pencil here, and you can choose an image for your course, make it more co colorful. You can upload it from your computer or a stock image from Unsplash. Actually, that, that feature um, is here on the left. It's called course image. You will click edit display settings. And then that's when you can add a, add a picture. On the left, course image. That's what I did to add this picture here. Now that I have it here, I can modify it by clicking this pencil button here. Um, so here I have a folder with my discussions. I have a, a start here module. Um, and I have my, all my course modules here as well. And I have those in folders. So you can put a folder in a module. Um, and you can only have two levels of a folder. But once I have a folder here, I cannot add another level of folder. So when, when you use the learning module, you can have a folder. Um, you can only have one level of folder. If you use a folder level here, you can have two levels. So you have this level, and then you can have one other folder within this particular folder. The second course here, I'm going to go into student preview mode. If you would like access to this mock course, you can just let me know. I can add you to it. But this is a fully designed course that I created just to kind of show how a course can look in, in Ultra. So once again, I have a banner here. As I mentioned, these items at the top, those, are, those cannot be changed, as well as the items on the left. I have a course cafe discussion board. I have a getting started module. Another good thing about the learning modules is that students can see when they haven't started it yet and they can see their progress through that learning module. So let's say I'm going to click this module here and this is in student preview mode. They can see all the information that is within this module. They can click the first item in the module. And as I mentioned earlier, we have this, these arrows so they can go maneuver through the modules that way. This is a doc document. You can add pictures, you can add videos, you can add hyperlinks, etc. within documents, the built-in document feature within Ultra. Here's the arrow that I was talking about earlier. Um, as I mentioned, pictures, documents, um, you use the arrow to go to additional information. If you want to go back, if students want to go back, they can click the back arrow to go back. So this is a really neat feature and why we recommend using the learning modules tool in Blackboard. 
And as you can see, students can see how many items they've accessed and they can see it here as well. And they can mark it as completed. They would like to say, hey, I've completed that. And this is all within that learning modules feature within UCD. All right, we have a resource page that has directions and videos, text and videos on how to get started with your transition. It also has um, frequently asked questions, how to get started and how to start building your course. So it has different videos and links on the topics that we discussed to, to today. All right. Um, that's all that I have. I know Chris is going to um, show one of her courses, share some survey result, results on one of her courses, and she will also begin the official uh, question and answer session. And I see that there's a question about learning modules. You can post. Yeah, so you can continue to do that as well. Um, so you may want to have a folder. Um, a folder or a learning module as like a container for that for that for your slides so they, they aren't just sitting there in the middle of, of the course content page so you may have a, a a folder that says powerpoints or something like that or a learning module that says powerpoints and you can post your slides right there okay so everyone this this is a a, a copy of a course that um um i teach regularly and um, I moved to Ultra um, a couple of years ago. Um, I was uh, one of those who really didn't want to convert at first. Um, and then once I did, I was so glad I did. Um, and one of the things I did when I created this uh, course for my students or this version of it um, is I put a survey in there and, and asked for their opinions on it. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but because this was kind of a new look for my students, um, I, I started out with uh, a little video on how this course works. And so I explained to them a little bit about how um, Ultra Course View looks and works and all that. And, and um, just so that they would feel a little bit more familiar. Um, I used modules um, mainly because of what Aisha was saying is, you know, when you uh, click on a module and you go into one of the items there, the students would have the, um, you know, the arrows to go back and forth um, between each, um, uh, each of the items. Let me go into one that's not hidden. Oh, these are all hidden. And um, so anyway, one of the things that um, the students liked most about the learning modules, one was the fact that they could proceed through them. Um, but the other thing that they said in the surveys, what they really liked was being able to go in here and just scroll and see everything that they needed to do for a particular week. So um, they would go in and uh, say that it was the first week of the class um uh they would see the name of the module and so forth and then um typically it started with the module o overview that told them everything they were supposed to do um i clicked in the wrong spot here and uh, which would tell them all the stuff that they needed to do for that particular week and what the objectives were and so forth and then they could just see everything that they needed to accomplish that week. Um, and when I asked them, you know, what they thought about um, Ultra compared to original, um, that's what they said was they liked that everything was right there. They didn't um, have to worry about what link to click on over on the left hand side because everything was right there. And they felt like everything was very consistent and easy to follow. So um, at any rate, that's one of the things that we recommend. Now, you could still use folders if you want to. Now, I haven't prettied up this particular course yet, 
But one of the neat things when you use a module as opposed to a folder is that you can add that image um, and make it look a little bit um, prettier if you want. Plus, you can also force the sequence if you want. Um, so that's why we recommend going through and using modules instead of folders. So um, uh, and anyway, I just wanted you to kind of see um, what a course looked like. Now, in mine, I told you about how we have this document up here about how this course works and so on. And then um, one of the things uh, people worry about is that folder idea that you can't go so many folders deep and they like to organize things. But what I wanted to point out is that um, you can add uh, documents. And for instance, this is a document here. And essentially, you can add all kinds of things in the document. Um, and so I have this first document here. If I wanted to add another, I could, you know, throw in an image here. Um, I can upload a file from my computer. I can go get something from the content collection if I need to. Um, I can even add HTML um, if, if I have actually designed a web page or something that I want to put in here. I can do multiple things within this one document. So that kind of works a little bit like your, your folder and um, allows you to organize things that way. In fact, let me go to a different week down here. And one of the things that I have within here are my readings and instructions. You'll see that this is multiple items. Uh, tell them what to do here. Um, how I have some, you know, a document that they can go look at to tell them how to do things. And you see that each one of these are different items that I've added. I even added an image down here and so on. So you can use the documents area to group things um, rather than having to create multiple levels of folders. One place where I did use folders is um, the weekly assessments because um, trying to um, follow the ideas associated with um, uh, universal design for learning, one of the things is multiple means of expression. And so I would let the students choose whether they wanted to take a quiz, um, if they wanted to do a little bit of coding, and sometimes I would even let them submit an essay describing what they thought about a. Um, a particular function or feature or that kind of stuff. So they would have options on what kind of assessment they wanted to do for that week. You know, that complicated the gradebook a little bit, but that was no real huge deal. Um, because in the gradebook, and somebody was asking about that before, um, you actually have two views. This is the grid view, which is very similar to the grid view you had in original. With that, if you're entering grades, you know, you can just click in and enter the grade if you want to. Or you can actually go in and um, view the submission right here. Um, so you can see what they turned in. And it works the same way um, as, as it did in original with the um, Blackboard Annotate, where you can put comments and grade and all that. And you just put your grade up there in the little grade pill and so on. So uh, it works very similar to the um, uh, way original does. You can also do list view here. And this lists all the different items. And um, say I was going to uh, grade the articles there. Um, you can see that the, Nobody opened this one. I need to pick one that has a submission here. OK, so um, and then you can go in and just click on that person and view the attempts and see what they did and move on from there. Now I can expand this side and I can select different grading statuses and I can do all the ones that need grading and so forth. 
um, or if I had the list of everybody who submitted here, I could just click through and grade everyone that has submitted. So there we go. So there's what um, a course looks like. So um, does anyone have any questions? Yes, uh, Bertram, as I should said there, um, quizzes, um, quizzes and um, can be set up so that they're self-graded. Uh, just like an original, um, there's like essay questions and short answer, I believe you, you would have to grade those, but most of the other question types are self-grading. And, and yes, the students can still view their quizzes to see what they missed and, and got correct. Um, but you have control over what they see and when they see it. And yes, multiple choice is self-grading, so you're, you're good with that one. Um, any of the suggestions that Aisha had or anything about ultra and timing. Now, a single comment to all students with one submission. No, there's there's not really a way to do that. But you can, you know, maybe with, with Blackboard annotate. Let me show you that um, real quickly. Um, you have this comment library. They call it a content library, but you can create a comment um, that is in this library. And if you want to put that particular comment on everybody, you would just click the dots next to it, click place comment, and then click where you want it to be and save. So you don't have to type the whole thing every time. So when you go in to grade them, you can add that comment each time. So that's one way to make that comment thing a little easier. The other thing that you could do is if you wanted to just give a comment to everybody like great job or everybody did wonderfully or whatever, you could just do that through announcements. And um, when you create the announcement, um, you could say comment on quiz two. Um, show that it's going to all course members and said, you know, whatever um, comment you want to make, and then send an email copy to everybody, and then save that. So everybody's going to get that, but not only that, when they come into the class, um, they'll see that announcement um, right off the bat. Um, it, it'll be like a pop-up window when they come into the class. Aisha, do you have anything else you want to add? No, that we are here to support you during your transition to Ultra Course View. We look forward to working with, with you all. Um, come to additional sessions, share these sessions with your friends. Uh, we, uh, we share, share these sessions with, with, with your colleagues and other individuals in your de de departments. Um, you can have one-on-one -on -one consultation with an instructional designer at the CTE if you would like, or uh, work with someone, work, work with a uh, consultant in e-learning services that's available as, as well. Mm -hmm.